Yo, 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 you made it. It's your favorite comic on the rise. Back with season two of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. You've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy, as well as kicking with some of the dopest comics in the game. Then this is the podcast for you. Man, you know how you just can't get a song out your mind? <laughs> I've been singing this song all day. There ain't no need to worry what tonight is gonna bring. Cause it'll be all over in the morning. Then I need to bring her sleepy voice ass in, like, there ain't no need to worry what tonight is gonna bring. Cause it'll be all over in the morning. That's my shit right there, boy. There's a fear of nightfall when darkness comes and covers all the day. Let me quit. Let me quit. <laughs> What's going on, good people? Indeed, Melody Williams back at you with another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. Hope y'all are well because I'm doing good. You, you know I'm doing good. I came in singing, so I'm feeling real good, man. You know what I'm saying? Season two, episode seven. I got an amazing episode for y'all. This go around. I got a comic OG. She's in the she's been in the game for I don't know how long. I'm talking about she goes all yes, I said she. She goes all the way back to the comic view and the deaf comedy jam days. Miss Hope Flood. I was able to Facebook stalk her enough and catch up with her at the um Uptown Comedy Corner in Atlanta when she came in to do the um to do the weekend. Uh she was nice enough to go ahead and give me an interview. Like I said, I've been asking her for a while and she said it was her pleasure. We had a really good time with the interview, man. The interview was <laughs> the interview was super dope because I wound up uh, interviewing her uh, in a, a studio of uh, another comic, Bo Peak. Anybody that uh, you know knows urban comedy, man, Bo Peak's been getting down for a while too. They go way back. He's out of Atlanta. Very funny cat, man. Y'all gonna hear him <laughs> in the interview as well because uh, he uh, was able to. You know, we were able to uh, use his studio. He has a studio close to uh, Uptown. And so he was uh, nice enough to let me come in there, man. We had, you know, quiet sound. Everything was perfect, so I didn't have to worry about, you know, uh, a whole bunch of stuff being picked up uh, in the uh, actual comedy club. So shout out to Bo P for letting me do that, man. I appreciate you. I'm going to have to uh, interview you soon as well, man. We'd love to get some of your comedy game. But as everybody knows, man, this is the uh, Comedy Chatter podcast, the comedy, the only comedy podcast from the perspective of an up-and-coming comic, up-and-coming, meaning myself. I've been in the game for 10 years. I've been getting it in. But, hey, I'm uh, running my own race. Like I tell everybody, it's my comedy journey, man. Um, special shout-out to Roger Feeney, y'all. You already know how I do my shout-outs. Mr. Roger Feeney, man, he's the guy that is the manager over at the uh, Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, my home club, where I started 10 years ago. Uh, I'm finally getting a chance to feature there. I'll be featuring uh, May 31st and June 1st. Uh, Friday, May 31st, two shows. Friday, two shows. Saturday, I got the whole fam coming, so y'all got to make sure if y'all in the Ann Arbor uh, area to fall through. The first show going to be, I'm talking about hella tight. It starts at 7.30. We're going to have a real good time. Uh, but like I said, two shows. Friday, two shows. Saturday, I'll be doing the whole weekend. I'm the feature comedian. If y'all know anything about uh, comedy clubs, you know they got a host, and then they probably do some guest sets, and then they got the feature comedian, which is, which is the middle, and then the headliner. I'm going to be the feature. I'm going to be the middle comic. Uh, it's going to be lit, man. Y'all got to come and check it out. We're going to have a really good time. Uh, Mr. David Pittman, that's the other shout-out I always do. He was the guy that believed in my vision, my sound and editing guy. He showed me how to put this whole thing together. Without him, uh, we wouldn't have uh, this Comedy Chatter podcast. And I'm just real happy, man, just to kind of continue to, you know, put thank you all. Thank, thank you to the ones that's listening, subscribing, supporting, to the people that's YouTube, and to the people that share to their friends. I get, I get a whole lot of support from my um you know, old uh, high school buddies and people. It's like, oh, man, Melody, you're a comedian. That's amazing, man. You used to be funny back in the day, and, man, it's good to see you still doing. That kind of stuff makes me smile because I'm like, hey, you know, thank you for that. You know, comedy was probably my calling. You, you always, uh, you know, just trying to find who you are and what you're supposed to be doing in the world, you know what I'm saying? And so it's real good to hear people say, man, I, I knew. I knew that you'd do something along those lines because you used to crack me up back in the day, man. You know, a day at school, a day at school was different when you were absent. You know what I'm saying? Somebody told me that recently. Like, when you were absent, man, it was the day was totally different as opposed to when you were at school. You used to crack us up and used to have a good time. So I appreciate that, man. I appreciate being, uh, you know, being, you know, uh, the entertainment for uh, other people. So, 
Um, without further ado, man, like I said, I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time. I know I usually do a comedy segment. I know I usually talk about topical stuff and I talk about, you know, all type of things that's going on in the world. But hey, man, Whole Flood gave me such a, uh, you know, an amazing interview that I don't want to take away uh, none of the time from her, man. Um, uh, to give you a little backstory about it, like I already told you, man, Bo P allowed us to be in uh, be in his um, studio. And so, you know, I had to be in there and I had to interview Hope with like uh, other people all in the room. And uh, it started out with all of us. Well, should I say them? I was a fly on the wall, really. They were all just telling funny stories, man. And it was just real hilarious. And y'all get a chance to hear some of that at the beginning. But, man, it was a real, just real positive vibe, real cool vibe between folks. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning and, you know, she had just finished the show. And we just had a good time in there just kicking it, man. So that's the vibe that I like to put off to. That's the reason why I always like to do the um, the interviews uh, in person. I don't ever like to do them on the phone. People are like, hey, man, can we just do a phone interview? I'm like, no, I'm flying to Cali if I have to. Like, shit, whatever I got to do as long as I want, I want me and the comedian to share that vibe and be in the same room. So, um, yeah, so that's what that's that's what makes the comedy chatter pie what it is, you know, the vibe between myself and the comedian. So y'all definitely gonna love this one, man. Without further ado, comedy chatter podcast season two, episode seven, the one and only Hope Flood. <laughs> How far you gotta go home? Uh-oh. All you, all, all it's gonna do, you're Uh-oh. gonna be driving. You're gonna be like, why is everybody going so fast? <laughs> then you look Uh-oh. and you're doing thirty and a seventy. <laughs> what? They're just going so fast. You know, I get on that four or five sometimes, and I watch I said I have to stop fucking driving high. <laughs> Too fucking paranoid. One time I was so high, goddamn, the blinds kept coming in and they crossed. I didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I dab. Got it. It's yeah, wax, you already know. And they take the wax and they put it in a bong. The bong has like a smoker on the end of it mm. and stuff, and it and it it's hot, and you, and you hit it. You know how the athletes they do that? That's mm-hmm. what dabbing That's is. Because it's dab one is. hit. I heard and about that. And you will that. cough for thirty minutes, burn your fucking throat, <laughs> and you are instantly high. <laughs> I was high for nine hours. Nine. That's how I feel with edibles. Yes, like edibles. Good. When I'm driving, it feel like a video game. I can't drive through edibles. I know, I don't. It makes you too paranoid. When I first bought my own first hookah in LA, mm-hmm. I didn't know it was a full of hookah. I done put beans in my hookah. That's what it should be for. Everybody said they were hookah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, that hookah, look at you didn't put weed in the hooker and stuff. And I dab, and then I got downstairs. It was on the 12th floor. I didn't call my Uber. And so, I don't know why I didn't call. By the time I got down, the elevator was going down. I said, I am fucked. <laughs> you know how you wake up from anesthesia and they say, ma'am, you know, I had failed. And didn't know, and the, man, and the man was like, are you all right, ma'am? I fucked my finger up. My shit is all fucked up. I have a joke. I'm writing a joke about... You you know you don't know how much you need every fucking thing on your fucking body. <laughs> Fuck your goddamn thumb up and your finger. You you don't know how much you need this shit. You take all these for granted. You like I got why do I need all this shit? Mm-hmm. Fuck your pinky toe up and have to That's take that right. shit off. Your motherfucking balance will be the fuck off or whatever. My finger was fucked up for three weeks. I couldn't pick up shit or nothing. You don't realize how much you need all of this shit. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It, so a guy asked me one time, what's the most important <laughs> bone or muscle on your body? What do you need the most? Uh-huh. And I was saying all kinds of shit. He said, no, your elbow. You can't wipe your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Wow. Wow. I don't even you want to think a, about that. You get up a day. You yeah. get up a day. Jack of, I'm amazing. Say a jack of all, jack of all <laughs> trades. Now let my man do his, go to his interview. I'm amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I finally got a chance to track down the one and only because I've been Facebook stalking her for a while. <laughs> but the one and only Miss Hope Flood, how we doing, Miss? I am fine. How are you? Good. I'm doing doing well. Doing well. Now you gotta explain to me when I first uh, kind of ran up to we at the Uptown tonight. She just got done ripping it. Uh, I came up to you and I said, "Hey, you know, we want to do the interview tonight and everything." And you told me that you couldn't uh, respond because you were in Facebook jail. And I don't know now, why. I was about to say, "Yeah, you got to tell us the story." So you don't know why. You don't know what you did. Tell us. So what what happened? Where you just kind of say some shit and then after that they kick you out or? I think I reposted something about 
something that was going on politically, and uh, I said something about like the priest and the pedophiles uh, and, and how all of this is coming to head, and the, the day of reckoning is coming or whatever. You know, Facebook is now monitoring yep, us, yep, black people, about what we're saying because they don't want us to say stuff. Very so I have true. three Facebook pages. I'm in Facebook jail on two of them. And I don't even oh like man, it. <laughs> man, yeah. So right after that, you just so right after that, you just kind of looked and saw, and they was like, and hey, I saw you your can't. message, but I couldn't respond. But you couldn't to respond. Wow, I, you, you my you, you making history because you my first person out of the interview that's been in Facebook jail. Wow. So we'll, we'll keep wow. that in mind. All wow. right. So you uh, live in, in L.A. Yes. Come now, are you, are you from our L.A. originally? I'm originally from Benton Harbor, Michigan. All right. So uh, be, mm-hmm. be hard. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. from Michigan myself, Ann Arbor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I moved to California when I was six. Okay. So I've been there ever since. I even went to L.A. high school. So I'm Okay. Totally yeah, I think familiar. I heard you say in, uh, on your set, Inglewood, right? Inglewood. All we'll right. Get to Inglewood later. But yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So I got to ask you about it. I, I usually start my pod off with some sports questions. I got to ask you about the Lakers, man. Like, what's going on? Magic done went over there. Magic done quit. So do you know anything about Do you keep up with the hoops or anything? Like, Magic quitting and all of that stuff? I am a eight. A, die-hard Laker fan. All I don't right. care if the team is horrible. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I have been a Laker fan since the dream team. Hey, you did look like you was about to kind of go, go if yeah, I said I something like, wrong. You was like, where are you? What exactly. you about to say about my Lakers? Exactly. It's, exactly. Like, it's like, you know, I'm, 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 uh, uh, Janet Jackson is my favorite artist. I mean, her okay. last album's having, but I'm still a fan. Still a fan. You know, and That's I've been a fan of the be. Lakers since Kareem and Worthy, Coop, yes. Rambus. And that's a real fan that's right a, there. That's, yeah, it's, it's Magic, people, the Dream yeah. Team. I've been a fan since the Dream Team with Pat Riley okay. was yeah. the coach of the Lakers. So, 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 I lived a block from the form. All right, so we all know not to mess with Hope's yeah, Lakers when we come to get Don't mess with I, I saw the way your face I know was like. Suck, but don't <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll uh, go way back with you in terms of the first time seeing you on a Def Comedy Jam. Okay. So you wanted a Def Comedy Jam OGs. Yes, I try to tell a lot of people, like, you know, oh, yeah, that new kind of stuff came out when Epps was host. I was like, but no, it went back to when Martin was hosted, and it was where everybody kind of was groundbreaking and became stars Absolutely. from it. So you got to tell me, you know, uh, how, how your experience was at the Def Comedy Jam back then, and if you got any kind of special stories or anything was, on the road. I was terrified. Okay. It was my first time ever going to New York mm-hmm. and meeting people. I was terrified because people were people like, when you go to New York, don't put your purse down, don't talk to nobody, <laughs> don't look at nobody, don't say nothing. That's what they said. And then I met some of the most amazing New Yorkers that I'm still friends with to this day. So okay. I, stay, I stay in Harlem sometime. I stay in the Bronx. I stay in Brooklyn. My girlfriend, uh, who used to be Wendy Williams' assistant, I stay with her in the Bronx. She taught me how to ride the subway. Okay. Now, yeah, you think. need to know that in yeah, New York. Yeah, she taught me how to ride the subway because I was renting cars, having wrecks in the cars. Oh, and, man. Because taxi drivers are horrible drivers. Tough to drive in New, New York. Yorkers alone. <laughs> when I went to went, rent cars, I would have I would hook up with the New York comics. I'd be like, you drive. Because mm-hmm. they know how to do it. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on my side pushing the, pushing the stop, pushing the pedal like stop. But they would never have an accident. But me, I had an accident. So my, she taught me how to ride the subway and... And in New York, the crime is not as bad as it used to be mm-hmm. and stuff. So you could be out at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. They have so many comedy clubs there. Sometimes I wouldn't get back to 6 in the morning. Oh, okay. So you some, kinda... of them, some of them clubs wouldn't even start till like 3. They'd yeah. be like, oh, come over to my comedy club. I was like, it's 3 in the morning. Oh, we're a little early. Oh, my and God. And I'm like, ain't nobody going to be at this club. <laughs> yeah. 3.30, people pack up in there. Pe- New York is really the city that never sleeps. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. So how did uh, Def Comedy Jam uh, kind of change? For Like I said, I, when we saw everybody that was going on Def Comedy Jam was just kind of taking up. How did that change things for you comedically? Oh, well, you know, if it... it, it it put me on, you know, the map. People got to know me and stuff. And got, I did it twice. My first one didn't air mm-hmm. and everything when I first okay. opened. And then I went back, like, years later and did it. And that one aired. But, okay. um, yeah, my first one did not air. Oh, okay. That's trivia right there. Because, like I say, every time we see the one, I was like, oh, that must have been the first time on it. Okay. Her first one didn't air. Yet. Okay, so her first one didn't air. <laughs> oh, you were there. Oh, you Ooh, saw that one. I was there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> now you did Comic View as well. I did ten seasons of Comic View. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so you got to tell us about that. A lot, a lot what of, happened what was, was DL Hughley is my mentor. He started me a comedy. DL, shout out. Mm-hmm, but I never got to do it when he was the host oh. because the talent coordinator and director thought me that we were too blue. Me and Cheryl Underwood were best friends at the time. Okay. So they thought we were too blue. So we decided to go to the show when Cedric became the host. Because we was like, who is this dude from St. Louis? So D.L. was first and Cedric was second. It was D.L.'s show. 
originally okay. they created Comic View 4DL. Oh. And he was the host for two years, and then something happened or whatever, and so they decided to change host every year mm. after they, they, he, he left. And so Cedric comes in, and we're like, who is this guy? All these L.A. comics, y'all going to get somebody from St. Louis? Who is this guy? And so okay. me and Cheryl went to just... To, to go, to heckle him, really. We was going to heckle him. Oh, wow. We was going to heckle Cedric. <laughs> he wasn't that Cedric. He wasn't Cedric then, yeah, but yeah, it's just funny to hear. This was like 90, this was in the 90s, 97, mm-hmm. 98 or something like that. Yep. Like, who is this guy? And so we'd say and shit, he on stage, we heckling him and stuff or whatever. And so we didn't know that that producer, director, and the talent coordinator was no longer there. Uh, and so TJ McGee, who you know TJ just died. I heard. We grew up I in church together. Yes, we grew up I in church together. together. TJ came up to me and Charlotte and he said, They want y'all to do the show. We were like, okay. They said, but and they were like, This is what you can't say anything. We were like, just blue. tell us what to do. Mm-hmm. Because the whole thing is that the profanity is not the punchline. Yeah. See a lot of comics right now where the profanity is the punchline and they're not going anywhere with that joke. They can't exactly. do churches, they can't do you know, stuff with young kids or whatever. So my profanity is just seasoning. Exactly. Can you eat chicken with just salt and pepper? Yeah, so there's no season. Can you? Yeah, I just like to cuss and stuff, but do I have exactly. to? No. And as I was touring with Lunell and we were doing a lot of mainstream comedy clubs, the only thing she asked me to do is not say nigga, the N-word. So I took it out and I don't even miss it. So I don't even say it a lot of times and stuff or whatever because you have to grow as a comic. Exactly. I tell comics exactly. all the time, you have to grow. You cannot be the greatest opener for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Go behind somebody sometimes. Mm-hmm. Grow as a comic and see where you are and get on stage and stuff like that so um so we did once we started we did comic view that one season they took we, off every year we did it matter of <laughs> fact they gave one hour specials one year and we were the one one year they gave it one hour specials and we got them it was me cheryl damon b cole and montana taylor she ain't even doing yeah. comedy where she at now yeah but i she remember ended up montana winning taylor the host there. the next year and we were like she who's she fucking <laughs> she was the worst one <laughs> and now she ain't even doing comedy no more we ain't no, don't nobody even know where that girl is no more exactly i do remember her hosting i mm-hmm. definitely remember her hosting yep uh-huh all right, so um, I got got to ask this now. You know, Me Too movement and everything going on. Comedy, you know, has always kind of been more of a fraternity than a sorority. It's kind of a man's game. I want to know where you uh, just kind of got your confidence from to say, you know what, I'm going to do comedy. Is this something that you always wanted to do? Or did you just kind of like do it for one time and say, you know what, I think I'm good enough to kind of like hang out here with these fellas or how it works. I just want to know where you kind of got your confidence from when you started. I have, um, I have I've wanted to be in the entertainment since I was five. Okay. So I, was in the, I was in every school play. I was in every talent show. I did parodies. I did skits and all of that stuff. So I've been in it a long time. So I just, um, the, the comp stand-up piece came later. And okay. I, it came later because I went to see Whoopi. I saw Whoopi Goldberg's one-woman show. Oh. And that inspired me. And yeah. Then, so the one they did on HBO? Mm-hmm. Kinda, okay. She did the five characters. Mm-hmm. That was in 86 or so. Mm-hmm. 87. I saw that. That inspired me. And then I went to a comedy club in L.A. And Dio was the host. And I saw him. And I saw a girl named Kim Tavares. I had never seen black female comedians do stand-up live. There saw we go. Her, there and we I go. said, I can do this. Yeah, there we go. I went up Kim to Tavares. Mm-hmm, Kim All Tavares. Right. I went up to um, DL and I said, um, I want to I wanna do stand-up. And this is just like, the first time you just mm-hmm, walked out? Okay. No, no. And so I went up and I said, I want to do stand-up. And then I, uh, he said, well, come back next week. I said, give me two weeks. And so I went home and I guess I wrote some material. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't know. I, but in that two weeks, I did go to other comedy clubs and study. Awesome. I tell comics all the time, sometimes just go and study. Just go look. You don't have to get oh on the God. stage all the time. Yes, just indeed. get up and study. And everything. I went and then I came back. I invited all my friends. They were waiting on it. Okay. And got a, and that got was a, brave. <laughs> got a stand ovation. And DL said, Is this your first time on stage? And I said, Well, doing stand up, but I've been on stage all my life. He said, Man, when you get where you're going, you're going to be amazing. And we yeah. developed a friendship, and he's my mentor and, and, and amazing. I've even patted myself after him because I held a drink in my hand for yeah. years and stuff on, on, on Comic View and on stage. And he's like my mentor. He's one of the most brilliant comics. Yes, he's one of my favorite as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You already kind of answered uh, one of my questions. I was going to ask, has your style changed? And I remember earlier Absolutely. in the interview, you say, hey, you know, you got to grow as a comedian. It has changed. Who I am, who I was, 
I still have my book of my original jokes from 30 years oh, ago. Okay. But who I was then, I look at it and I say, God, I was corny. Who the fuck? <laughs> hey, we all, yeah. never say this shit. Exactly. You start God, I would place. never say this corny shit. Yes. But you yes. grow. It's like your age. It's like you growing mm-hmm. as a person and yeah. getting older. You're not who you was at 20, who you are at 30. Very true. You grow mature and you go through life shit. And you grow. So it's the same thing as, com- as comedy. Very true, very true. Now, you mentioned uh, Miss Lunell. Shout out. I know you guys go way back. You guys are good friends. Uh, I wanted to know, and I always ask all the comedians that I interview this, when you came up, did you come up with a group of comics? I know you've mentioned Dale's your uh, uh, your mentor, but I'm talking about like a group of up-and-comings where all of y'all were kind of running stuff off each other, you, Lunell, maybe coming together, or were you just kind of a lone wolf just kind of coming up by yourself, just kind of going to comedy clubs, this, that, and the other? Did you have like a group of cats? Well, Lunell was in Oakland. So she wasn't even doing a comedy at the time. She was in Oakland doing a show called Soul Beat. Okay. Which is like a talk show late at night. And when comics, we would come up to do Jeffries. Who knows about it, Jeffries? <laughs> All right. We would go to her show at midnight and be on the, on TV with her. They had, She was on a black station. It was a 24-hour station. So she didn't come to L.A. till way later to oh. do comedy. But, yeah, my core group was me and Jamie Foxx and Speedy. And wow. my other partner, Juan. Bo was a part. When he came down, Bo was a part of it. Wow. Um, oh, God. Uh it was who? Spanky. Yeah, Spanky didn't come to way later. I'm talking about uh, the townhouse days and stuff uh, or whatever. This is Joe Torrey, Pierre, okay. uh, Ricky Harris. Ricky man, Harris. Rest in peace. Rest my, in peace. My love. Yes. My soul. It still hurts. Um, those those are the people we came up with, and we still phase on. We're still all friends. Phase on love. Uh-huh. Okay. We're still Shout friends. Out. I had a club in L.A. It was okay. the hottest Tuesday night oh. in the country. Really? And comics would come to L.A. Wow. just to play the townhouse. The townhouse in L.A. All right, all right. All right. We did it for seven years. Man, that sounds like we a grew, real mean group Fox right there. Yeah, you Chris said Tucker Jamie Tucker. Yeah, dude, this was before anybody was famous. This was before yeah. Comic View. This was before Def Jam. My we were God, just, yeah. you know, Michael, Michael Collier, Collier Robin Shy Town. Harris. I have one. I had one of the last oh. days before Robin passed. Oh my God! That's Ronaldo Ray one of my favorite there. right there. Robin. Rodney Winfield and Ronaldo. May they rest in peace. Oh man, Rodney, Rodney was Winfield. My, Rodney, was, Rodney yes. was my mentor. Cha, cha, man. Cha, cha, cha. Man. Mm-hmm. Those yeah, that's were my mentors. That, Those that, that's a I mean group. Martin used to come through there every now and then. Martin, you know, okay. Whatever, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Cat. All Cat Williams, them. okay. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. Chris Tucker used to beg group. me for $15 back in the day. <laughs> How about I gotta stay? I need some money. And he showed me a little bank account. I was like, Chris, go on now. And yeah. stuff. But yeah, so. Uh, Yvette Wilson. I started Yvette. Yvette, yep. Yvette grew up peace. since second grade. Yep. And may so, yeah, may peace. she rest well. Yeah. Uh, Yvette Wilson. I started Yvette. I started a lot of them. I started A.J. Wanda Johnson. White. Wanda White. Man. Mad Marv. Uh, uh, I started a lot of those a lot of those comics. All right. Yeah, that's Because I was the type of comic, if you said you was a comedian, I'll let you get on stage. It's not for me to judge that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And stuff. You say you're a comic, I'm going to give you a platform. Yeah, let, then let, you let gonna them get on. you're going to decide whether or not you want to Exactly. Shit. Believe me, the stage will let you know. Oh, yeah, the stage, the, the stage you know. will let you know. Al Tuma. Al Tuma. I remember him too. D. Yeah, yep. That's the group. I read right. his book. I read his book. Yep. That's who black I came comedians, up with all black those comedy. People. Yeah. I came up with all of those awesome. People. And we right. would we would have another set after the show, a bagging oh. session. Oh, okay. We would go outside saying. after the club. We talk about other. each other. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only female that can hang with these niggas. Yeah, that's important too. I'm that's the important. only one who can hang that's, with that's Henry important. Welch included. Oh man, Henry yes. is the king of it. That's important. But when I came along, I met Henry. I said, I heard about you, nigga. <laughs> I'm <pretty> scared <laughs> of you, Henry. It was a yeah. session outside. This wasn't no yeah, say so y'all used to yeah, go yeah. in. Yeah. They could have recorded this, huh? Well, put this on the yeah. Put that on the yeah. We still standing around clowning each other. That's it was a funny. show after the show. That's funny. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I'm wondering, I know I uh, just listened to your set and you mentioned that you uh you know been overseas with comedy as well too. I'm just wanting to know uh what some of your favorite venues are overseas as well as here. It's like any of the funny bones, do you have any kind of memorable ones? I know you told me about yours, you used to run on two this. So I know that's gotta be a memorable one. But do you and uh do you do you uh do some of the venues that you've done kind of stick out to you? Not any the other venues funny as much as the cities. Okay. Like Chicago is a favorite for me. Detroit okay. loves comedy. I love going there. I love going to Raleigh, you know, whatever. Charlotte, they love comedy there. Um, Vegas, you know, so there's city. Colorado Springs, all of them are pretty decent cities that I've gone to. So I've been to all the cities. I've been to okay. 14 countries, Hawaii, St. Thomas, yeah. Virgin Islands, Jamaica, all of those places and stuff with my comedy. It's been a, a, a beautiful, amazing ride. I mean... You know, the beautiful thing about comedy, especially with comedians, that they need to understand is that, and Linnell says this, and I love what she says, 
you have to love this so much that if you can't do it, you would rather die. Yes. Mm-hmm. Gotta have that like love. Pac got shot. <laughs> yep, gotta have that love. Swung, I think it killed him. Mm-hmm. Because then he, would, he couldn't he wouldn't rap. He wouldn't have been able to rap. Like, I think you rather, I think he was just like, just let me die. Yeah, yeah. Like that's true. You, you know, got gotta love it. You, you gotta to love, love it. Like you said, the stage will let you know. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Now, the first time I got to meet you, I came down to your uh, comics rock convention in L.A. Where I, yeah. I only stayed for the first day, but okay. that's all I had. I had, I had to get up, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I enjoyed it. Uh, you guys were at the J Spot this day. I'm trying to remember the whole scene. You had Laura Hayes, I think. You had Marsha Warfield. Wow. You had yourself, you had Lunell all on the stage, and you guys just did like this amazing question and answers, p- panel session, yes. And all of us new comics was just there, just kind of networking and shaking hands, and it was amazing. I'm wondering if that's, you know, why you started it, number one, and then if that's something that you're going to kind of keep up, or is you still doing it, whatever? Originally, I started it for, for for females. It was called the Females in Comedy Convention. Oh, okay. And then I had a group on Facebook called FICA, Females in Comedy Association. It's like 2,500 girls in a group, because I felt Felt that we were behind the men and that the last female comedian black that had a sitcom on a major network was Thea and that was in 1990 mm-hmm. and I was like why is that not happening for us anymore and I wanted to create a dialogue for us and I wanted to get some get us educated in the business of comedy so that they cause so we could we could get where you guys are the men are Exactly. And so I created it for the females, and the male comedians would call me and threaten me like, "Oh, why is it just for women? I'm gonna put on a dress and a wig and some heels." I'm like, "Nigga, don't don't hide behind the convention to do what you want to do." Now. Exactly. And so, if that's what you exactly. want to do. Then just, just do go it. ahead and do that. Yeah. And so I the pressure, 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 and then the women started being really catty and and everything. And I said, "Let me add this male t- testosterone in the room. Women act better when men are around." Okay. And stuff. And so I um I added. It rebranded it and changed it to the Comics Rock Convention yeah. and allowed male comedians to come. And more men started coming than women. And men aren't yeah. as offensive. I can say, move this chair, sit over here, and y'all don't get mad. The women like, fuck how that bitch <laughs> and stuff. It's like, it just got to be so much. Okay. And I did it for seven years. Yeah. Last year was the last year. I did it for seven years. Seven is the number of completion, and I did it. And, okay. and, I, and everybody missed it this year. It would have been in April. I did it the last week in April to honor my mother's birthday. Yeah. And I just didn't do it this year because I'm trying to work on my career and get my myself back out there into this next level and then I think that will create a, a better credibility and legitimacy to me and what I do and then I'll bring it back so everybody's missing it so I think I'm going to do it in 2020. Okay all right sounds like yeah I but they have another one it. they have yeah. a uh, the Peachtree Comedy Festival that's here with yep, Lulu. Here they in have the, Atlanta uh, is coming up. Yeah they have the Black Girls Giggle in New Orleans that comes up New Orleans weekend and then they have the Black Women in Comedy that's this weekend in New York so they have some other copycats <laughs> yeah oh, hey. Mm, hey. Spin off. so that's the greatest but, form of flattery they say it's called it's called stealing <laughs> it's called stealing, stealing but, <laughs> and they're know. not paying you right yeah. exactly and, you know and um but God put something in my heart to do and I'm just following what he told me to do and stuff. And so if I do it again, I still got to, I just got to wait on him and tell me how to do it. I'll cut down the days and, and, but the workshops and seminars were taught by other comedians. That was mm-hmm. amazing and beautiful. Shane taught social media. Mm-hmm. I had somebody come in and do voiceovers. So what I did was t- take in, take, took out 27, 25 years of comedy and I put it into workshops and seminars to help comedians to win. All right. Ain't no use of y'all spinning y'all wheels for 30 years to realize you're a better producer, you're a better radio host, you're exactly. a better actor, exactly. you're a better sing, you know, whatever, or you're better with improv or something like that. No use of spinning your wheels doing that when you could be doing something else. Comedy can just be a gateway into something else. Like Jamie Foxx is really, he really wants to be a singer. He really wants to be Brian McKnight. <laughs> and stuff. So he's a singer, but he yeah. used comedy as his way to get in. Yeah. Is he a great stand up? Yes, because he's acting like a comedian. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever, because he's an actor, he's an impersonator, yeah. and that's what he does, and whatever, and stuff. And so that's how he got in, but that was his way to get into what he really wanted to do. Exactly. So that's what it is. It's for comedians to come and get their aha moment mm-hmm. and realize, you know what? I I think I'm a better punch up. There's a job in Hollywood where the writer writes the the the, the sitcom, and then the comedians 
They they go in a room and they punch it up to make it funny. I've heard about that. It's, Alex it's a Thomas. five thousand dollar week job. Alex Thomas said he did that for the Fresh yes, Prince. Yes, he did. He and did. I was, him was and like, Darryl, oh, when I heard Darryl that, Heath. And yeah. stuff, that's a job in Hollywood and everything. Because there's some people who are better writers than there'll ever be a stand up comedian. True, you know whatever. And there's some people that are funny that can look at stuff and make it funny. And that's a job in Hollywood. There's Very a true. Guy. Very there's true. There's a voiceover job. There's sketch comedy. So there's a lot of things to do in comedy other than focusing on just doing stand up. Mm. Awesome, awesome, definitely. All right, so I usually end uh, my uh, pod just kind of asking my uh, my interviewee who they're fanning on right now. And this could be like you know newer comedians. It could be somebody that we never heard of, or it could just be one of the you know, some of the people that's got the Netflix specials and all that. But who's somebody that when you uh, look at them or you'll sit down and watch them if they performing, they make you crack up. They crack you up. There's there's some comedians. I say this all the time that they're not famous, but. I could watch them forever. Bo is one of them. And I'm not saying it because Bo P. Room. All right. Bo P. is here, by I the could, way, ladies and gentlemen. I could watch Bo forever. Very funny. Very funny, dude. Forever. I remember him on all this stuff. I could watch Tony Tone forever. Okay. Tony Tone cracks me up with all them impressions and stuff, and he's just brilliant. I could watch Tony Roberts forever. Tony Roberts, Tony Detroit. Is, yes. Finest, he's one of my hilarious. favorites. I could watch him forever. Um, who else I could watch forever? There's some people I could just. They just, they just do yes, it for me. Yes, so yes. When creative. they, when they, when they get down, you sitting down. Like I gotta go watch them. Yeah, they're or her. creative. They're, they're innovative. They're not afraid. They're this and that. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could sit and watch them forever. I could watch Lunell forever. We tour together, but every time I watch her act, it just cracks me up. Funny. Every single Funny. time. Shout out Lunell. Or whatever. Um, I want to say I'm not a big fan of these video internet comedians. Yes, yes. Speak not on it. Not hating on them. Speak on it. Let me, let me be clear. I'm not hating on them. I think that there's a lane for them that's not stand-up lane. Whatever, exactly. Whatever it is, it, they need to have their own lane. And they're booking them for stand-up, for headlining, stand-up comedy And they don't have the jobs. material because those exactly. skits cannot, those skits and videos cannot translate into stand-up comedy. Exactly. And, but but never fear stand-up comedians. St true stand-up comedy will always prevail. It won't die. It's never going anywhere. It won't die. You know, so it's not, so either they're going to get an act <laughs> or they go fan out or whatever exactly. and everything. And some of them are very disrespectful to the vets. I haven't ran into any of them, but when I do and they're disrespectful, really? um, they're going to get fucked up. You're going to let them know. <laughs> they're going to get fucked up because I feel like I have earned some things in this business. I have earned the right to be respected. I have earned the right to be paid. Those things I've earned, mm -hmm. I have fought for every single comedian, female and otherwise. I was part of the boycott for BET. Bo was part of that boycott. He was on the show. Didn't get paid for none of them. If I could get half of the residuals in mm. Comic View, I'd be rich. Mm. You know, but we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know what we were signing because they put it in your face two minutes before you get ready to go on stage and you so excited about being on TV for the first time. You exactly. didn't read it. You didn't know. Exactly. We didn't know. And then once, you know, when you know better, you do better. And we were trying to get the other comedians to say, hey, stand out. Because that Comedy View was the number one highest rated money making show on BET. Mm. And they gave us $150 for eight years. Mm. Comics used to stay at my house. Mm. My house was like the real world. <laughs> and stuff. Comics would come in, they would stay, they drive my car, they go, and my eat, son was I, my son was somewhere, <laughs> but I had two bedrooms. I was like, so whoever was Whoever was filming the next day, I'd let them get the room, get a good night rest and stuff so they could film. And I would have 10, 20 comics just stacked on each other on top. I wish I had wow. those films and stuff wow. of that. So I've always been a fighter and an advocate for us. Always have been. And that's yeah. why I feel like I have that respect, you know, from comedians and stuff. And, 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 and because I have been fighting for us for a long time, especially women as well, but just for us and black comedy and, and to and everything. Now it's in the forefront. Now these white clubs cannot survive without us. Exactly. Yeah, they're coming for us now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time. Like I said, after all this Facebook stalking, I've been trying to get you. But we finally got you. I knew. I said, once you come to ATL, yes, I got it. Because I live right around the corner from perfect. Uptown. Work so it's right all. Out. Tell us, tell, before we uh, get out of here, tell me a little bit about your other ventures, too, that you mentioned. I see your lips popping and my all that good stuff. Yeah. This is my lip glitter line. It's called Hope Lips. You can go to hopelipswith2s.com and order you some lip glitter. And then I'm in the cannabis business. Um, my uh, website is highhopes.biz. And we're my motto high hopes. I see what you did there. Stop biz. Yes. <laughs> and so the my motto is that we are healers, not dealers. Okay. I don't sell weed. I'm getting it for you. But I don't sell weed. <laughs> but I'm doing. I do edibles. I call them edibles. 
They're heavily medicated because it's medicine. Yeah. And we have to start saying that. It's medicine and stuff. So all my edibles are medible. So they're medicine. They will heal you. I use organic shake that has no pesticides in it. I can infuse and medicate ink, butter, seasoning salt, um, honey. Um, that's not liquor. Juice. I'm like, um, Oh, high hopes dot biz. High hopes dot biz. For you smokers. High hopes dot biz. Go to my website, email me if you want something. I make all the cookies, red velvet, chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin, all right. popcorn, puff corn, uh, uh, Molly Ranchers. Oh, the Molly oh, Ranchers. The Molly Ranchers. Oh, oh man. Gummies. Mm -hmm. Vape pens. I'm trying to educate our people on the mm -hmm. benefits of vaping and how much better it is than smoking blunts with the tobacco and things like that. You mm -hmm. don't smell like it. All my carts are fruity flavors and stuff. So go to highhopes.biz and see it. Email me if you want something. I I, I will accommodate. CBD is the healing component of, of, of THC and weed, and it will heal you. But if you have cancer, the two have to work together. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. It's Hope Blood. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yo, thanks so much for checking out the pod. A very special thanks to my guest this go round, Miss Hope Flood. Be sure to check out Hope's website for future show and date info, and also for her extra curricular activities and her ventures. Be sure to check out the Comedy Chatter Pod next go around for another dope comedian, and of course, me, Melvin Williams. Y'all keep listening, subscribing, and supporting. Y'all be good to yourselves and each other. Peace out. <laughs>